Hi, Cypri here from FEA for All. And in this video, we'll talk about model analysis in FEA simulation. So that's a topic which is pretty basic in FEA. If you're doing finite element analysis, you have to know what is model simulation. And still, I always get a lot of questions about what is model simulation, uh, how do you use it, and why. And um, I've written a few blog posts about it, and a lot of people came back to me and told me that this was so useful. Uh, so I decided to make a video to basically convey my uh, understanding of model analysis in a video form. So it's much more intuitive for some of you to understand what it is, because it's really, really important to understand what model analysis is. Okay, so let's start. So uh, in FEA, you have several types of simulations, basically. So you have static simulations and you have dynamic simulations. So static simulation are, um, you can say that those are the, more, the most common type of simulation where you suppose that the system doesn't move, it's fixed. Uh, now, the less common type is the dynamic type of simulation. What actually happens if your system moves dynamically uh, and there is an influence of um, this uh, movement on the behavior of the system? And generally, that the dynamic influence is due to several factors. So the inertia, the mass of the system, and, and the damping, yes. So those three are the most, uh, most impactful, uh, you can say. Why would you have to understand this? A system which is static and doesn't move um, can, be, can be correctly designed so that it behaves correctly when it doesn't move. But as soon as it starts to move, mass, inertia, damping enters into play and the system might break under a sudden load applied to it um, or simply the system being put into conditions that are not ideal for it. Um, and that's when you start to need to do a more advanced kind of simulation, which are dynamics type of simulation. Now, back to model simulation. Why do we use this type of simulation? Well, uh, it's basically an entry level type of simulation to go into the dynamic realm. So it's, uh, it's classified as a dynamic simulation uh, because it helps to determine the vibration modes of your uh, system. Uh, and, and then you'll have to perform more advanced simulation to understand how the model actually vibrates uh, along to those modes. Now you have to understand what is a vibration mode. Um, and for that, I have a few very simple examples that I always give. Um, think about your car. Um, and when you're driving in normal condition, you're not going too fast. Uh, if you have a good car, you don't feel too much the vibration of the engine. Right, so, uh, but as soon as you go faster, so for example, you go to the motorway, you start to go at 130, 140 or more kilometers, uh, depending on the speed load, of course, uh, and then you start to feel this vibration, you know, this uh, suddenly you, s you, you feel this, uh, all your car start to, to shake. And this is because the speed you go, uh, the speed you're driving at, has um, carries some uh, vibration. Also, the road is not perfect, and you'll have the influence of your uh, of very small deformation on the road, on your engine, and the speed you drive in causes um, the vibration at a certain frequency happening into your system. And when your typical car is loaded at this typical frequency, uh, your system starts to behave in a dynamic way and your model starts, your motor, your engine start to vibrate in a very, um, let's say, not the typical um, small deformation, it starts to increase a bit the displacement. And this is due to 
uh, a phenomenon called resonance into mechanical system is that every uh, system has a certain set of very important vibration called resonance vibration which will drive this system into a resonance state so which means that the displacement normally happening will increase suddenly exponentially at a very specific frequency so of course you don't want that to happen because it means that if you stay at this very specific frequency your system will break uh, so it will cause a lot of damage into your system so what uh, generally engineers wants to do is to design a system so that uh, it never goes into those uh, those forbidden resonance frequencies. So you stay in between those frequencies uh, and you stay in a safe operating mode. Uh, so model analysis gives you the, the all the values of those resonance frequencies into your system. Um, now, uh, what, what is important to understand also is that uh, it gives you only the value of the frequencies, but it does not tell you how much a system behaves or deforms at this specific frequency. It only tells you what is the vibration frequency. It doesn't tell you how much your model will deform. So I'm repeating that because it's really important. And some people, uh, you know, they use FEA software, they get those uh, frequency, they look at the deformed shape, and then they're starting to think, oh, okay, that's how my system deforms. And they look at the value and, and they note it and, okay, that, that's it. I got my maximum deformation at this frequency. No, modal deformation um, only gives you frequency and the idea of how it deforms. So that's called the mode shape. But it doesn't give you the actual value of the deformation. So even if you see a certain value in, inside your software, generally this is a fake value used just for purpose of visualization. And this is also why, because when you do a model analysis, you only apply a constraint condition. You do not apply loadings. So there's no loading in, uh, in a model simulation. There is no uh, force acting at a specific frequency applied. Uh, there is only restraint on other models. So you're uh, you're able to view the vibration of your model at this frequency, but that's all. Um, and another thing, uh, so what do you do when you actually want to know the, the, the actual deformation? Well, you have to use a more complex type of simulation. So for example, frequency response simulation is basically used to uh, analyze the actual response of the system uh, on a certain uh, frequency. So, and then you are allowed to, to apply a real dynamic load to your system and, uh, and, and see how it behaves. And the result you get is the real deformation of your system. Um, now, of course, if your model is set up correctly. Um, now, uh, is it the only important thing about model analysis? No. Model analysis can be useful in other, um, other contexts. So one thing I, one reason I like model analysis is that it allows me to check also my model. Because there is something about model analysis called uh, rigid body modes. And this is basically something that happens on your model if it is not co uh, constrained correctly. If, if you have a boundary condition which is not applied correctly to your model and it's, uh, well, it, it's supposed to move in one direction infinitely because it's not constrained correctly. And uh, this is called a rigid body mode. And when you do a model simulation, you actually see that generally in the software. It tells you, oh, uh, or you see a very huge deformation in one direction and, and then you know, oh, there is a rigid body mode and that means that I didn't constrain correctly. And why is it important to do a model to do that? Because generally when you do a linear static um, simulation, it doesn't tell you this information. It just tells you your simulation failed because you have a, a singularity or you have a degree of freedom which is not correctly constrained at this point but it doesn't tell you exactly which constraint is not correct, why it's not working. And sometimes it's, it's due to the contacts 
uh, inside the model, so it's much more insidious to understand, uh, you know, which contact is actually failing. Uh, but if you do a model analysis, you see it immediately. You see that, oh, okay, so there is a, a big displacement between those two parts. Why is that? I put a contact, but it doesn't work. So a model analysis can help you to see this kind of things as well. So it's a very good tool to check your, your results, uh, make sure that your simulation is okay. Okay, so uh, it's all for today's rant. I could, I could go on and, and tell you a bit much more about this topic, but um, please, if you want to know more, go back on the blog and read those articles. Uh, I'll put the link below the video. Uh, and if you want to know more about one specific aspect of uh, engineering, if it's uh, element simulation or CAE, just let me know in the comments. I read everything and I try to re respond as much as I can. Thank you for watching.